asked me what are my hopes for the future relations between the peoples of Ireland and Great Britain. I have always said that I desired to establish friendly relations between the two peoples. That is still my desire and hope. But the historic Irish nation has been artificially divided. De Valera had to tread a fine political line. Though the Irish were certainly not pro-British, they also didn't want the Nazis to succeed. It was simply not possible for de Valera's Irish Republic to join Britain as an ally, though in fact many individuals did join up in the struggle against Hitler. De Valera decided that Ireland should remain neutral. De Valera has to walk a very narrow tightrope in, in, in 1939, 1940, because there is generally popular support for the policy of neutrality, for staying out of the war. And de Valera is very anxious to maintain neutrality, despite being under pressure from Britain, for example, um, to, to come in on the Allied side. Maintaining Ireland's neutrality would create enormous tension between Dublin and London. De Valera angered the British because the German and Japanese embassies remained open for business in Dublin. They were an obvious security risk. And De Valera also refused to allow the British to use Irish ports as bases, an act that caused great concern in the Royal Navy. While the loss of the use of the southern Irish ports is a severe handicap to the Navy in its ceaseless life and death struggle in the Atlantic, their acquisition by Germany would be a disaster. The southern Irish ports were critical because before the war they had kept Britain supplied with food and equipment. In my view, the starvation of this island, rather than its invasion, is still Hitler's aim, and to achieve this, a German seizure of the South Irish ports may well be on his agenda. The threat of starvation was even more likely to succeed because de Valera had allowed German ships to use Irish waters. British convoys bringing supplies across the Atlantic were forced to divert to the longer northern approaches, leaving them vulnerable to attack by German U-boats. The Battle of the Atlantic would eventually be won, but only after the loss of over 3,500 ships and more than 30,000 men. The hour of victory is postponed, and therefore soldiers as well as sailors go to their graves, with every ship sunk in the Battle of the Atlantic. Yet Mr. De Valera will not budge. But the one thing he did agree to was to turn on the IRA. While he staunchly defended the right to Irish neutrality, his security service, G2, had struck a deal to share intelligence with MI5 in 1939. This so-called Dublin link, agreed by G2's Colonel Dan Bryan and MI5's Guy Little, would do more to thwart the IRA than anything else during the war. <laughs> 